Sawasti ka and hello everyone. Would you like to learn the secrets of Koh Phang in Thailand from someone that was actually raised there? Let's get started. First of all, let me tell you a little bit about myself. My name is Sandy. I was born on Koh Phang an Island. I have a bachelor's degree in mass communications and former Thai magazine editor. I travel back and forth between the USA and Thailand often. Though I do occasionally visit a few other countries now and then. Vacation is fun wherever we go, but it's not easy when our destination is the other side of the world. So, I would like to provide you with some information. Well, as much as I know anyway. I would like nothing more than to help you make your vacation on Koh Phangan more fun, easier, enjoyable, and to help you discover the many wonders of our island. Just in case you have never heard of it, Koh Phangan is an island off the Gulf Coast of Southern Thailand forming part of Surat Thani Province. Koh Phangan, Ko, means island, or you can call Pangan Island, is just a small island and about 40 kilometers perimeter. It's located in between two sister islands of Koh Samui, the larger sister island, and Koh Tao, the smaller sister island. It was first known as a land of coconut trees, then later, Party Island, known for its world-famous full moon parties. Now some call it Sticky Island because many people just get stuck here and don't want to leave. Where is Koh Phangan? The island is about 55 kilometers from the mainland and you'll need to get here by boat for the last part of the journey. There are many types of boat services offered for you to choose from. Each serves travelers with different needs. Probably the most economical choice for getting here is the night boat. It's a no-frills transportation service and doesn't offer many amenities. There will be some seating and sleeping areas, a restroom facility, and a small shop which offers purchases of snacks and drinks during the voyage. Taking the overnight boat from Surat Thani to Koh Phangan is a convenient and budget-friendly way to travel between the mainland and the island. It's a great option for those who want to save money on accommodations or who arrive in Surat Thani late at night. From Surat Thani to Koh Phangan, the usual departing time is around 11 p.m. and the boat arrives at Tong Sala Pier on Koh Phangan early the next morning. Another option for getting here is the ferry. This is the only service where you can take your vehicle, such as a car, truck, or scooter. The ferries themselves are the largest and take the longest as they are transporting vehicles and goods. The three main ports the ferry company uses are Donsak, Koh Samui, and Koh Pengen. This usually takes around two and a half hours to arrive on the island from Donsak. And finally, the speedboat options. These services are all about speed, elegance, and convenience. Once you've boarded this mode of transportation, don't get too comfortable in your seat as these boats usually make the trip in one half hour or less from Koh Samui. However you decide to travel, all boats will arrive at Tong Sala Pier on Koh Pengen and that is convenient because Tong Sala is also our downtown area. I hesitate in calling it a city, but it is the largest town on our little island. Though you can find lots of things to do here, you won't get lost and yes, we even have a few local 7-Eleven convenience stores. You'll also find plenty of opportunities for shopping, banking, bars, restaurants, car or scooter rentals, or medical care. Don't forget to try the food stalls at the Pan Tip Nightly Food Market. You'll find great stuff to eat and at an economical price too. The population of the island usually makes their living from the sea, or some have coconut farms as well. Up until roughly three decades ago, these were the largest sources of income for islanders. 
Now, since the island is becoming more of a tourist destination, its population has steadily increased and the tourism trade drives most of the local economy. However, commercial fishing and coconut farming still remain an important part of the island economy. Even though tourism has taken over roughly half of the island, the rest remains as a national park, which is more than 80 square kilometers of unspoiled rainforest with the variety of beautiful tropical plants and flowers. Kopengen has been a longtime favorite of many past kings of Thailand, especially King Rama V. He visited Kopengen 14 times during his reign as king. Tan Sedet is one of the most historic places where King Rama V ascribed his name on the rock during his visit. It's still there today, a reminder of how brief our existence really is, compared with the passage of time. If you decide to visit our tropical paradise island, you might just become one of the visitors who calls Koh Pengen the sticky island, as you may never want to leave. Remember, if you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and click the notification bell to stay up to date with our newest videos. This is a new channel and since my content is subscriber driven only, I do need subscribers to continue to bring you the best content while providing you with little known details most channels can't provide. Best of all, it's free to do so. Next time in part two, we'll take a deep dive into the history of Koh Pangan Island. See you soon.